The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down toys, tools and appliances just to find out what's inside. I'm David and in this video we're going to be tearing down a personal carbon monoxide detector. really a lot to say about uh, something like this. I mean, it's very much self-explanatory. I mean, I'm imagining most people have got a carbon monoxide detector in their home somewhere, certainly those that use natural gas for heating. But personal gas detectors and atmosphere detectors and dangerous atmosphere detectors, you know, you know if you'd need one. I mean, if you're going into a confined space or somewhere where there's a risk of a high uh, unsafe atmosphere, you'd need a personal detector. And this is one of those. This particular one is a Crowcon Gasman 2 carbon monoxide. There's a whole range of these for different gases, different atmospheres. This particular one is carbon monoxide. This one I think is from about 1999. Let's get into it. So like most things that are ruggedized for an environment, it's got a nice sort of thick rubber case in case you drop it. It's kind of interesting the color it used to be versus the color it is now. Uh, on the back, you've got a nice belt clip, which we'll start by getting that off. A really nice little feature about this device, which I didn't clock straight away. This has got internal rechargeable batteries. And I know what you're thinking. Where do you plug it in? Actually, you don't. You sit it in a cradle and these two screws, which hold the top on, are also the charging contacts. Genius. See, I wanted to do this device because I think detecting of gases and chemicals sounds like quite an easy prospect when you've got either lots of power available to you or you've got chemicals available to you. But in a portable rechargeable device, I kind of figured, actually, I don't know a lot about that. And I thought it'd be fun to see what is done professionally first sign of life. Uh, nice double gasket on here, obviously to keep, uh, I would assume water out, but you know, I think it's probably as much a gas seal as anything else to make sure you don't contaminate the device. Uh, on the top, you've got the double LEDs, which are here. I think one of these is the sounder and it's very possible that's the sounder because it's just come out with three pins on the bottom. And yeah, this last device up here is the sensor. So we'll have a look, see if we can find out exactly what that is and how it might work. Now the sounder is still sort of sealed in here, there you go. So if you exceed an alarm on this device, um, you will automatically set off predefined alarms and you can also have exposure limits as well. Oh, that's the sensor board, so that's the sounder, which will go off if there's uh, an alarm. It's got its own little gaskets and rings. But this little device here, this, this in tiny little thing is the carbon monoxide sensor. So let's put that to one side, come back to it, because we may be able to take that apart further. Aha, just a plastic case with membrane seals around the buttons and three AA batteries. Warning, only primary battery type, energizer, silver seal or Duracell. There's some battery snobbery in there for you. I mean, to give you a clue of when this thing was last in use, the expiry date on these batteries is uh, 2011. So the batteries expired 10 years ago. I think it's safe to say this unit is well and truly defunct. So we've got a neat little assembly made up of three prime PCBs. We've got the display and buttons, which are on 2.5 millimeter, 2.54 millimeter headers. So that comes out nicely. We've got an additional little board in here. And the sensor board is soldered onto that main board. Big device here, but it's got like a rubbery silicon cover on it. I wonder what that is. 1999, there you go. Well, as I said, this chassis gets used for a number of devices. It's actually only the um, CO five, zero to 500 particles per million that make this quite unique. And presumably this sensor is an interchangeable module as well. So it's reasonable to believe that with a different sensor, you'd need a different daughter board with the resistor packs on it just to match up the input requirements of that. 
sensor. Let's try and follow some traces and see if that is the case. And yeah, I just I still love the fact that these screws, as they go through the side of the case, through these brass bushings in the plastic, press up against these slightly flexible steel contacts for rechargeable batteries. That is awesome. Great little touch. And an idea I will definitely try and pinch in future projects of my own. So let's put all of this to one side for a minute. Let's focus in on this sensor, see if that is anything interesting or significant. Okay, our, our carbon monoxide sensor is, I'm unlikely to get any data on this based on Crowcon. Uh, that part number is almost invariably going to be an internal one. And I don't think 4CF carbon monoxide actually means anything significant. I think that's probably going to be their model number uh, or revision number. I, I don't think. I could be wrong, but I don't think that means anything significant. Now, it'll be interesting to find out what type of detector this is. Uh, there are four main types of carbon monoxide detector. Uh, the first is uh, optochemical, where you have a chemical which reacts to the presence of carbon monoxide. That changes colour, and you can electronically detect that colour change, sort of with a photodiode or something. Um, I don't think that's going to be used for this because this has got a high precision uh, and gives you a quantitative, no, a qualitative output. So it will tell you how much carbon monoxide is present. Optochemical, not so good at that. Uh, the next type is biomimetic, um, which is pretty similar to optochemical, um, but it uses a hemoglobin type of substance, which is, incidentally, that's the chemical in your blood that actually binds with oxygens transported around, which also binds with uh, irreversibly with carbon monoxide, which is why carbon monoxide is bad. Um, again, I don't think that's what you're going to have here because it's got a limited life, uh, limited shelf life, albeit it's not within the realm, not sort of outside the realms of possibility that this module gets swapped out if it goes back for calibration or every six years or five years. It's entirely possible. Uh, there is also an electrochemical carbon monoxide detector type, uh, whereby the carbon monoxide actually causes a reaction which can generate current, which seems like objectively the best type. Um, they are very good, but need regular calibration to be actually useful. Uh, and the fourth type is uh, semiconductor type. But the trouble is that needs to be heated to like 400 degrees Celsius before it can actually detect. So not all that useful in a battery powered lightweight device. I really do hate how I'm out destroying things, but. I think in this case, when we've got batteries that are already more than 10 years old, I don't think it's too much of a risk. Okay, we've got a membrane, some very, very fine traces. And if you've got tiny little traces like these, it always makes me think they're probably a precious metal. Like, that's like wet. Oh, uh, that's probably electrolyte used in the fuel cell. I'm just wondering if there's any rudimentary test I can do to work out what, what chemical this might be soaked in. So there's definitely no optical elements in here. Certainly nothing I would recognise as a diode or an infrared LED. So I think we can rule a couple of types out. I'm definitely leaning towards the electrochemical type. Uh, what I'd really like to do is uh, put some bicarbonate soda on here and see if it fizzes, because that will give me a clue as to whether that's sulfuric acid, which can be used in the, um, as the electrolyte in the electrochemical type. So bear with me, we'll see what we can find. I always keep lots of this around because it's got some very handy properties. Uh, if you've never done it, try some bicarbonate of soda and some uh, cyanoacrylate, some super glue. It makes a really nice, hard, clear plastic very quickly that you can sort of file down and uh, use for repairing things. Oh yeah. I don't definitely know it's sulfuric acid, but there's definitely something Something acidic in there. So that makes me think it is basically a miniature fuel cell. So as carbon monoxide is present, it mixes with the electrolyte and produces a tiny little current. 
which is then measurable as the presence of carbon monoxide, which does give this sensor a really finite uh, shelf life. But like I say, as a removable module, it can be replaced. Now, fortunately, I don't think there's much else to this. So with the sensor well and truly torn apart in every sense of the word, let's have a really deep dive into what the components are on here and what everything does. Okay, we'll start with the easy one. This, uh, this big I see on the back of the screen is in fact a microcontroller. That is a Hitachi 8-bit microcontroller, uh, 5 megahertz with a CMOS on board. So that's going to be the brains of the outfit. Got a few passive ICs. We'll still dig out what these are under the microscope. Still don't know what this whacking great thing is here. It's like slightly rubberized or silicon. It's labeled on the borders F1. But I don't know what that is. And you've got the sensor board on top with the sounder, the two alarm LEDs and those three pins where the carbon monoxide sensor pushed in. This is something that I've never really dived too much into either in my career or for the electronics inside. And I was really interested to see how electronic chemical detection worked. I mean, in this instance, I know we're going for one type of one chemical detection, but I don't think I would have guessed that if I'd had a million years to try. And sulfuric acid reacting to create a current, that's kind of cool. Um, if you have an idea for a teardown, don't forget to head over to the Element 14 community and let me know. If you'd like to see more of this kind of thing, either industrial electronics or chemical detecting electronics, let me know. You can go find me over there. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you next time. <laughs>